Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Investing with IBD, sponsored by MarketSmith. Today is November 4th, 2020. I'm your host, Arusha Pierce, and we have Dan Fitzpatrick returning back to the show. Dan is the founder of StockMarketMentor.com. Thanks for being here again, Dan. Hey, thanks for having me. It's always fun to do these with you. On today's podcast, we are going to talk about the current market. We're going to talk about the volatility squeeze, and then we will end the episode with a few current ideas. So let's get back into the current market. We'll start off with this. The market is back in a confirmed uptrend. We got a follow through day. That's the signal that we look for here at Investors Business Daily uh, to let us know that the market now has a chance to resume uh, its uptrend. A number of leading stocks started to act quite well. Dan, what are your thoughts about this market? Yeah, you know, if it's funny just listening to what you just said. If if we didn't know that there was an election yesterday, yeah. wouldn't we just look at like you just look at the S and P and say, oh yeah, it's moving up. We're still in a little, we're still in a trading range, but we're yep. moving up. You know, yep. so it's all good. So when you think about it, you know, that's what I like about this market. People care about um, people care about the election, um, but money really doesn't. All money wants is to be. Uh, to, to know what to do. It wants stability. And so uh, whatever you feel about the results of the election, money just kind of wants to go up. And so I love the certainty of this. And with respect to all that, we got to split Washington, D.C., however the presidency works out, we're going to be kind of gridlocked. So it's no, you know, Green New Deal or tax right. increases or anything like that. And that's what the market's looking at. I think we're still, we're still in a trading range. You know, I'm looking at your, at your S&P there yep. um, since, uh, you know, late August or September, you know, we, yeah. we've been in this, what I call a trading box. And this is the air, this is the area where you're going to get chewed out. You're going to get chewed up if you really try to trade this um, other than in really quick trades. Uh, and so as I see the market right now, I, I, I like the market, but from a timing standpoint, I feel like it's a little bit of a money sucker. Like, you know, you can be risking um, dollars to make nickels and dimes if you're not really, really particular about the things that you're doing. There are a lot of different stocks out there that are working really well, and we can talk about those later. But with respect to just the market, this is a really choppy market, but I view it as actually a healthy market. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the secular uptrend. Thank you, Federal Reserve, which was not on the ballot. <laughs> yeah, I, you, you bring up a really good point, and not only the Federal Reserve, yeah. but uh, we, we had this really strong, unbelievable trend uh, starting in early April. And we just been really, you know, hopefully we're just consolidating that move we have that trading range. And now as we start to move past the election, we get the certainty of, of the results and, and maybe it's gonna be gridlock in Washington and the market can just resume that secular trend that it's, it's hopefully begun or that new bull market. Um, yeah. So yeah, you do bring a good point of within this kind of range, uh, you wanna be a little bit more yeah. careful. So we had that follow through day and that was today. Uh, where it put, uh, where we put, IBD has put the market back in a confirmed uptrend. So slowly move in. If this is really the next leg in a in a, a new uptrend or a continuation of this secular trend right here, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have plenty of time. You can just slowly move in and gradually uh, increase your exposure. Yeah, I think you can kind of, you know, average in. I don't like to average down. Um, but, but as they say, losers average losers, but, uh, but averaging in is a good thing, but check this out, go to the weekly chart on, on this. Okay. So I'm going now, to the weekly chart of the S and P. Yep. To me, that looks pretty exciting. Uh, you're <laughs> you, right. you know what I mean? It, you yeah. look, it, you get a better perspective when you yeah. see what the weekly price action is. Yes. We're still in consolidation, but suddenly it, in the, when when you look at it in the you know the context of the last few years, this is actually kind of a volatility squeeze type of situation, which you know we'll talk about uh, a little bit later. But 
I've just been looking at this over the last few weeks, thinking like, you know, we could be ready to really blast off. Uh, that and that's I, what I, I'm hoping for too, Dan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 it's funny that you're think you know you've been thinking of that because I've been you know thinking and hoping the same thing because uh, we were essentially also building a cup with handle. Mm -hmm. on on these indexes a lot of couple of handles in the in the leading stocks too but then they started to break We're like okay maybe that's not gonna happen but right. with the kind of the recovery that it's happening right now you're right putting a little bit longer term perspective really gives you a better framework that uh if we get back into all-time highs out of the trading range that we were just looking at on the daily chart uh we could just resume this kind of nice steady uptrend and there just could be a lot more opportunity for the, the stocks yeah. that we like to be in. Yeah. And, you know, one one thing I'll, I'll mention, I see this um, with my with my members at Stock Market Mentor. We're taught like you're talking about looking at things in a long term, uh, a long term context. You know, you're seeing a long term chart and this is what you know, that this is what the price can do. And looking at your chart, you know, we are where we are here in, in November. This goes clear back to, to June of 2014. Right. So yep. we all have this immediate gratification need. I, I do. If I buy something, yep. I want the stock to tell me almost immediately, you are a genius. Let me pay <laughs> you off. You know, right. that's exactly. the way it is. So, but what happens is, we can all have this tendency to look at a weekly chart like this and then take some kind of action. And then we're sitting around for a week or two or three or four waiting for something to happen, forgetting about the fact that we're, we're looking at a weekly chart. You know, you're, you're not putting in a trade that's going to pay you off like out of a volatility squeeze on a daily chart, but you're taking a position so that you're there when the market starts to move. And so my what I coach my people on is learn to hold longer. You know, you have a stop loss, put a stop loss in so you define how much you can lose, but then just kick back and, and let somebody else do the work for you. You just stick with your position. And if you're not stopped out, then the position's still working. It'll pay you off. Yeah, I, and in my opinion, I, I, I feel like that approach is the most reproducible approach con and, and in, on a consistency basis. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, what, while you were talking about that concept, it reminds me of you know the classic Jesse e. Livermore concept. It, it wasn't the thinking, it was the sitting you know, with, with the stocks, sticking with the trend, being there at the right time. And yeah, let, a lot yeah. of times if you let yourself get stopped out, you're not going to get stopped out uh, if you're picking some really good stocks now uh dan let's go to another concept here just about and, and i'm sure you've been seeing this with some with a number of your members uh, that that you're coaching and, and providing a service to on stock market uh, stock market mentor.com um that this tendency for people to get emotional and then just do the absolute wrong thing at the wrong time talk about that a little bit yeah um it's it's f funny. It's actually kind of cruel. The way that the way the market works is it it sucks us in and it, it really just prompts us to do the wrong thing at the wrong time. You're sitting there um, and maybe you've got a position and it keeps it's going against you and it goes you know lower and lower and lower and you're doing the hope strategy where you're going like I can't sell it now. I hope it turns around and then finally you say, I can't take it anymore. And it's you and about 100,000 other traders who have the same threshold, you dump it, and then the stock goes up immediately. And then it's the same thing on the other side where you're watching a stock and you've got the fear of missing out until finally you say, you know, pardon the expression, screw it, let's do it. You know, I got to buy this stock. And then that's the high. And so if somebody were looking over your shoulder and they didn't know anything about trading, they would look at you and say, wow, this guy's really good. He knows when to sell right at the bottom and he knows when to buy right at the top. He must be making a lot of money. You know, and so, and I mean, I've seen, I've seen it in my own trading, you know, mm -hmm. I started, I didn't know anything about it, but what I've found is the way you get past that, you know, where you have an opinion, you have, you, I know this is going to do this. I know this stock's going to break out, or I know it's going to come back is if you have a process, if you have a trading process that starts with 
stock selection, and you know, maybe even before that market analysis, what's the S&P doing? What's the NASDAQ doing? But typically your, pro your stocks are gonna tell you that. If you're finding a bunch of stocks that suit your process, that are giving you good setups, that are meeting all your criteria, that's a good market. And you don't need an opinion. You don't need to, to be a, a real subjective guy. You can say, well, I have my process and I've got these 12 stocks that are perfect. I can't buy 12, but maybe I can buy two or three. On the other hand, you've got your process and you can't find any stocks that meet your criteria. Well, don't lower your standards. You say, okay, well, I got, I got nothing here. So I'm, I'm just going to sit with cash. Like if you're going to the grocery <laughs> Here's one, it's one thing I did yesterday. You're going to the grocery store and you're looking for avocados and, and they're all either really, really soft to where they're rotten yeah. or they're really, really hard to where maybe sometime around the Christmas holidays, they'll be <laughs> you know, edible. Well, you don't just say, okay, well, I'll buy a bunch of these. You go like, I, I don't have an entry. Yes, <laughs> so, I like you know, that. So I'll wait. And so that's just kind of how I get around things is, and it is a challenge. There's no question about it. We all have discipline issues. Some are really, really good. Um, others really, really struggle. I struggle, but the way that I get around that is to just say, no stupid stuff today. I'm going to do exactly what my process tells me and nothing else. Yeah, and, and, and that's a great way to describe the concept of listening to the market, right? If the market's giving you a lot of ideas, it's giving you plenty of reason to get exposure to the market. If there aren't a lot of ideas in your process that you're finding, it's saying, yeah, you, you know, maybe stay out a little bit longer. And, and if you're listening to the market, that's going to really help you in the long run, because when you're in a great uptrend, uh, there's going to be plenty of ideas. Yeah. And one thing with respect to that, too, you have to understand that when you're in a great uptrend and the market's in a great uptrend or your stock is, that's institutional buying. Institutions are competing with each other sometimes. To, it's not just one guy over at Fidelity or something. They're competing with each other to get a bunch of stock in the door so they can make money on this wonderful company, like think of Zoom video, you know, right. wonderful company that's got these great prospects. So that's going to take a while. You, you or, or me, you know, we can build a position sometimes in a day, but if we're really being careful and, and trading it through the ebbs and flows, I ain't going to move the stock. I'll tell you that. And so if you just understand what's happening, you're going to be able to hold through the inevitable ebbs and flows. You have to. Otherwise, you're going to be a swing trader. You're going to buy whenever you buy and sell at a 5% profit and then take a bunch of 3% losses. Yeah, which is which which happens all the time. So yeah. let's let's take a quick break here, Dan. Uh, we'll we'll keep talking about this topic here, but the the market is back in an uptrend. So make sure you are doing that process and and uh, keeping your watch list fresh to see if it's going to start to grow over the next few weeks and give you more opportunity to get into this uptrend. And of course, also remember, we are in earnings season. When we come back, uh, we are going to talk more about this process. And we will also talk about the volatility squeeze. We'll be back. I am here with Scott St. Clair. Scott's one of our senior product coaches at MarketSmith. Now, Scott, there are a ton of publicly traded stocks just on the US. I think it's over 5,000 stocks. Who has the time to go through all these stocks and find the very best ones? Yeah, most people don't, right? So what you need is a tool like MarketSmith. We have decades of research on what makes a great winning stock. So we've done all the research for you. So we're going to try to highlight those specific stocks with those great data points. So if you're looking for that next great potential big winner, orange stock ideas button, you just click on it and you've got some of the main reports that we use, including the Growth 250. Yeah. And the Growth 250 is the first list, list that I go through on the weekends. Yeah. It's the most popular one, but there are others. There's the Breaking Out Today, Stocks Near a Pivot, and then the Blue Dot List, right, which is very popular. It's going to show you the stocks with the best relative strength. So we've done a lot of the work for you. What you have to do is review these lists. You're going to come up with some of the best ideas in that current market environment. Perfect. Mark Smith saves you time and makes investment research that much easier. For more information, 
Go to Investors.com slash Podcast 2020. Dan Fitzpatrick's our guest on Investing with IVD, sponsored by MarketSmith. Okay, Dan, let's get into, you mentioned it a couple of times uh, in the previous segment, let's get into this concept of the volatility squeeze, because this is a, it's a really important concept, and I think it's a great detail to know when you are looking at setups, when you're looking at bases, or some kind of trading pattern. Yeah, it's. Um, I worked with John Bollinger for a brief uh, time, about six months back in 2000, I think it was. He was the first one that kind of introduced me to it. it. He calls it a Bollinger band squeeze. Imagine that, John Bollinger calling it that. <laughs> um, and it's it's a tightening up of, of, a, of a stock range where the Bollinger bands get really, really tight um, together. I use 6%. Uh, Bollinger band with 6% of whatever the price is as my criteria. I know Mark Minervini, uh, he doesn't use those indicators, but he has a VCP, volatility contraction pattern. It's it's all the same stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the same stuff because it works. And the thing is, um, the way a stock trades, and you can look at any chart, it trades in waves where it's it's moves a lot and then it really tightens up because people get tired of it, they get bored, they forget about it, and then it goes again. So the idea of this volatility squeeze is you want to be looking at stocks that have the right setup for you, that if you're just doing a simple scan where you know you want the 200 day and the 50 day moving average both to be moving higher. That's a phase two or stage two uptrend. And you want the 50 above the 200. You know, you you want your your stocks in a certain in a certain trend. So then you have a list, you have a list of stuff um, that you're looking at. And now you're just looking for the right setup. And Dan, just by even just using that one criteria of of 50 day in an uptrend, 200 day in uptrend, and the 50 day over the 200 day, you're going to yeah. eliminate tons of stocks. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Uh, people say, like, oh, do you have a scan for this or that? You know, there's a bunch of scans out there, but there's, there is a, a sense that people are looking for scans to find, to find all these stocks to be inclusive, you know, like, oh, I want, no, you want a stock to be exclusive. You, you want to be, or a, a scan, you know, mm-hmm. you want that to be like, if, if I can only find three stocks on some scan, maybe I need to expand my scan. But if I find 303, you know, what are you going to do with that? And so, yeah, I'll set these parameters like the ones that we talked about and then um, look for a Bollinger Band contraction. And then there's other things that that I really like to see. And that is that the squeeze, which is which is just a side, you know, a sideways uh, range on lighter volume as the stock moves sideways. And I love to see them drift either sideways or even sideways to down and have the 50 day moving average come up and, and meet it because you'll see a stock run up above the 50 to a point where you say, well, I can't buy that stock. It's up too much. And then just with the passage of time. The stock drifts sideways, the volatility starts to contract. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, time marches on and the 50 day gets right up there. When you see that, that is a situation that you say, all right, I like the trend of the stock. I like the pattern. And that can be, it's kind of like a handle in a cup and handle pattern. That's really, you know, what we're talking about. And then you can get in that. And if you're in it just the right, if you're in it just the right time, then boom, it goes, but you can get in a little early as long as you, you know, you do what I mentioned earlier, which is, you know, be patient, let the, let the stock come to you. Um, Don't just get in there and demand that something happens right away. But I love the volatility squeeze. So let's go into uh, some examples here, Dan. Uh, and and the first one uh, that we're going to look at is Starbucks. So I just pulled up Starbucks here uh, on the MarketSmith chart on, on a daily view in a daily view right here. Mm-hmm. Um, so so yeah, walk us through what you're seeing here and why, uh, from a volatility squeeze perspective, this is this is something of, uh, worth uh, uh, at least it's interesting to you. Yeah. Um, so you can see if you just look at it over, if, if you can maybe zoom in a little bit, not a lot, but you can see how the stocks basically bumped up against 90 bucks mm-hmm. about four times total, you know, first starts in early September. All the while, 
um, the, the trading range has been getting tighter and tighter and it's, it's actually making higher lows like the one at, at 81.75, right? That's you know, higher than the prior one. And yeah. then this, this latest one, um, which is what, around 85, 85.50 or so. And mm -hmm. even though you know, this isn't the perfect one because the stock did um, take a, a little bit of a dip um, below the 50 day moving average. But frankly, yeah. um, you have that on an arithmetic setting. If that was yes. a log chart, it would look a little bit different, okay. you know, but, but this serves our purposes. So the idea here is the stock's trading sideways. It's had a few higher volume days. Mm -hmm. um, and so that makes it a little suspect to me. What I want to see is the stock continue to trade um, sideways, and it may very well do that. They don't have earnings for a while, um, and have the volume contract. See, that's what we want to see: is we want to see volume contracting a bit, and then the, everything gets kind of sleepy. So I would say this is a little. It's a little early um, to be to be buying this stock with a volatility squeeze or a volatility contraction pattern um, set up. But this is what you want to see as opposed to um, say back in, um, it looks like uh, late August and September, you see how the stock was really kind of chopping around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right around there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's just a stock bouncing up and down, just ping ponging around, but it's starting to get tighter now. Um, yeah, right about there. And the other thing is, and this is important for people to, to think about with these squeezes, you see where resistance is. You've got the red line. Think about where the stock was at the low and then say, all right, in order for this stock to break out, it has to have first run off of the low and come back up to test resistance. What's the percentage move there? What's the percentage move? Did it just have to come up, you know, 5% or something? Okay, you know, sure, maybe it'll break out. But if you've got a stock that's had to run up, say, 15% before right. it even tests um, resistance, that's a stock that's just tired. You know, there's been a lot of buying that's had to get it up there. And then, um, and I, I think institutions can do this to where they're saying, well, we need to, we need to scare up some more demand here. So they'll juice the stock up through that resistance and then pile in with their supply and sell to all the breakout buyers. And it's just because there's been a lot of profit already built into the stock on the recent move from the low to the high. So this is why, again, these volatility squeezes where the price doesn't have to move much from the low to the high before it can break out. Mm. That's, that's the type of situation that you look at. And, you know, I have a couple stocks that I'll show you um, in the next section that, that show this perfectly. And, you know, I've had my members in a couple of them over the last few days, and they just broke out today. So you'll see how this thing actually works. But and one thing I wanted to mention, too, for option traders, a lot of people don't realize this, but the options market really doesn't look at technicals that much. Like Tom Sosanoff, he's the guy that um, that wrote Big Tasty Trade and Thinkorswim. Yeah, Tasty yep. Trade and Thinkorswim and all that. Um Man, I wish I'd been his partner when he was doing that. Seriously. But anyway, so, you know, he doesn't look at technicals, like technicals, schmecknicals, you know, he just looks at math. Yes. But the thing is, we as chart readers, we can have a great advantage uh, if because we understand this. And this is why, like this uh, volatility uh, squeeze uh, concept that I'm talking about. These are like tight springs. They're as you know, the coiled spring. They're tight springs just getting ready to explode. Okay, well, all the options market sees is a stock that's just not doing very much. And because it's not doing very much, the options are going to get kind of cheap. You know, who's going to spend a whole bunch of money on a call option when the stock's just sleepy? Um, and so, you know, options get really expensive when a stock is moving around a lot, when it's really wildly oscillating, then that's when options get really expensive. But here's the thing. So the options market does not price in um, potential moves 
out of a volatility squeeze. So for option traders, you will find that if you've got a stock that's in a squeeze, the options prices, like the call prices, they're actually not that expensive. You're actually buying at a discount. And then as long as the stock works in your favor, you'll be able to sell at a really nice um, premium. So that's just something that a lot of people don't, I don't think they really think about it. You don't want to sell. I don't want to sell options when a stock's in a squeeze because I'm now I'm selling at a discount and I've obligated myself to do something that I'm probably not going to want to do. You know, so when you're selling, you're the house. When you're buying, you're the card player. When you see a volatility squeeze, the deck is really rich. So you want to be the card player. No, th that that's uh, a really interesting concept. And it, mm -hmm. and it makes a lot of sense because during that volatility squeeze, uh, one thing that it's telling you, especially even like within a cup of the handle is it's not any more supply coming in. Right. And there's no there's no more sellers at that point. And you're, it's really kind of just transitioning to more committed buyers. Uh, so uh, taking that concept and applying it to, to options is uh, very, very interesting. Dan, let's go into uh, one more example here for a volatility squeeze. And this is monolithic power systems, uh, ticker symbol MPWR. And we are looking uh, at these charts, if, if you are in your car and, and listening to the audio version of this podcast, you can always go to investors.com slash podcast when you're at home and take a look at the video version. Uh, but we just pulled up monolithic here on, on a daily chart. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's go let, let's go over one more example here. And and so why, why was this a, a volatility squeeze to you? Okay, well, you can see right at the right end of the green stuff um, there. Yeah, the green bar right where you are. Um, the stock, you know, it, it had a heck of a move from 250 um, to, uh, to 330 or so, and then it just traded sideways for a while. You know, it definitely a change in character. And during that sideways action, if you go down and look at the volume uh, from, uh, from the number 397, 400, you know, that spike, if, if you look at over the next uh, several weeks, mm -hmm. volume was well below average. Yep. That's what you want to see. You want to see the volatility, just, you know, not a lot of determined buyers, not a lot of determined sellers. Everybody's pretty much comfortable with where they are. Nobody's, nobody really feels strongly about this stock one way or another, but then look what happened um, last week, about five days ago, you see the big, you know, the big moves higher, yep. wide ranging days. Yeah, you see the, you know, the triple towers there of yeah. volume. <laughs> yep. That tells you that now they're coming back for the stock. And, and it's interesting because if you just look at where this stock has been um, back in March, you know, it was below 150 and now it's up above 300. When the stock has been in this volatility squeeze, I think it's perfectly natural to say, well, I think this stock is topping out. You know, I don't, it's made this kind of move for crying yeah. out loud. Uh, all that volume institutions are selling. I got to get out of this stock or I at least need to ignore it. Mm -hmm. But then when you see the volume kicking in like that, that's the type of thing that doesn't happen in a volatility squeeze. It's the type of thing that happens near the end of the volatility squeeze and that's what gives you the um that's what gives you the signal that hey there's something happening here and i don't think it's a bad thing i think it's a good thing and so this had a really nice move today but now one thing that we're talking you know that i mentioned earlier and because this is important it has to be stated the red line on on your chart that is the 50 day right 50 yes. day moving average. Yes, exactly. Okay, so this is a high squeeze. It's away from the 50 day moving average. I like the company itself. The fundamentals are awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Bill O'Neill would pat me on the head and say, nice, Dan, <laughs> nice job. Yes, you got it all here. Perfect. Um, but from a technical standpoint, the stock's a little extended. Mm -hmm. So you just need to be aware of that. Don't expect the stock to go from 300 to 400. You just have to recognize, though, that this is a really good stock in a really good power situation. And, and, and it's, it, it's important to be really disciplined at this point and not do the, the wrong thing at the, the wrong time, right? Yeah. And one thing, too, this is and this is really important. You know, we can I can talk about, you know, I don't know how many 
however many stocks you want to. We can go over 10 stocks that I could say, this is a good stock to buy, this is a good stock to buy, and this is why. I could give you reasons for all that. But you shouldn't go out and buy all 10 of them. You yes. know, I'm not constructing a portfolio. Yeah. What I'm saying is each trader has to know exactly what they're looking for. And so like you were talking earlier about having a list, you know, or just like looking for stocks um, that meet your criteria. So you look at them and go, okay, well, I've got these 10 stocks. These are really good. I want to find one yeah. <laughs> or I want to find yeah. two. And so again, we're eliminating, we're not including, we're eliminating to where we're finally you know, we're finally cutting it down to, okay, which one is, you know, which one's going to be crowned Miss America or Mr. <laughs> Universe? I know it ain't going to be me. Um. Or nor me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so learn the details of these setups can help you with your timing with stocks and options. And as a result, improve the probability of your success. Coming up next, we are going to go over a few more ideas. Stay tuned. MarketSmith will give you a huge edge in the stock market. Better stocks, bigger profits. MarketSmith is the top research platform for IBD. It's just the best tool for individual stock selection. Everything within MarketSmith is designed to bring those best stocks to the surface. It does a lot of the work for you of filtering down to the potential leaders. It's when you take the training wheels off and you're ready to invest on a more professional level. MarketSmith will help you take control of your investment life. If you want to get serious about investing, start your membership today. We are back with Dan Fitzpatrick on Investing with IBD, sponsored by MarketSmith. Okay, Dan, let's get into a few ideas. And the first one is Farfetch, and the ticker symbol is FTCH. And I'm going to pull it up on the MarketSmith charts, and then I'll just share my screen. And okay, so I just pulled this up on the daily chart, and I actually have a position in this. And, you know, it's interesting because you're done with the volatility squeeze and I, and I was, you know, seeing it in, in my, my own way, kind of just with the price and volume, like you, you described it. It's funny at how for some of these stocks that are acting very, very technically strong or I have a great story and everything lines up, how different strategies will all kind of gravitate towards the same stock. Yeah. Yeah. This is um, the chart is, is really um, beautiful. It, it's ugly if you're not in it. That's the thing. Yes. Oh, it's a beautiful chart. No, only if you bought it below 30, then it's really good looking. And if yes. you're just looking at it now, you're going like, I don't like that chart at all. Um, but yeah, this this had all the hallmarks of um, a, of a squeeze that was going to take off. And I'm, I'm just looking at, at my notes. Um, this was one that we bought on um, October 26th. It was the first kind of fake out breakout. The big, yeah, that that one, the the one where you go, crap, I can't believe I bought it. The big yeah, yeah, yeah. up there. Right, right, right there, but, yeah, yeah. But it. we didn't, you know, you mentioned this earlier. We didn't get stopped out. I put That's my stop in there and we yeah. were, I think we were probably like 13 cents away from getting stopped out. Wow. So then the stock stabilized and you're sitting there for a week or so. Yep. And then all of a sudden, boom, you know, we get this big move to the upside. And so this is a, this, the chart pattern, it's kind of a cup and handle there. Yeah. Low is, handle. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And so um, that worked really well. And the other thing that's, that's interesting on this, I look at, I look a lot at, at Bill O'Neill's um, scan. I figure, you know, if it's good enough for him, you know, I can probably lower myself to use it. Um, <laughs> you know, where he's looking at certain fundamentals uh, and stuff as well as technicals. And this pretty much hit uh, just about all of them. It's got a little right. earnings issues, uh, but not a lot. And uh, <laughs> we'll say the EPS rating is seven. seven. So maybe, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the way I look at it a lot of times is, you know, if it has most of the stuff, Right. Take take a shot. And usually the what's the worst that could happen? You're selling at 5% loss, 8% loss. Exactly. But Arusha, look at the relative strength rating. Line. Yep, there you go. That line yep. is, that's a new, I don't know if that's a blue dot, but it should be. It, um, it might have had when it was breaking out, it might have yeah. had the, the blue dot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on, you know, know. A blue dot there someplace. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, rel and I mean, Guys, relative strength is really where it's at because mm -hmm. 
if you're in stocks, you know, you have a good entry and the relative strength rating is 95, 96, 97. That's a good stock for you. You're beating the market. And so, but on the other hand, you don't care about being right because you're too busy making money. On the other hand, you're sitting there in a utility stock or something that's sitting around there, you know, with an RS of 12. Um, maybe you might ultimately be right, but you're also going to be broke, you know. So anyway, I like this. And also, I think the company itself is kind of cool. It's really not interesting. Ideal. Yeah. But they're like a middleman for the fashion industry. Yeah, no, I, I've been. It's really it, it, yeah, it, it's great. I mean, what, what, what the way I look at it is, you know, I, I don't, you know, I hardly ever buy any like luxury brands and stuff like that. But I'm happy to buy the stock that provides luxury brands uh, yeah. because they're, they're going to be making some, some good money on a lot of people who are really into it. Absolutely. Like if I, I'm thinking like if I make some burlap sack you know, running shorts or something. I mean, hey, maybe there's a place for that in the fashion world. <laughs> there we go. So the Dan Fitzpatrick shorts. And, and they'll say, well, that's a little far-fetched. <laughs> Actually, I just made that joke. <laughs> I, I like it. <laughs> um, one other thing I just wanted to point out, I switched over to the, the Marcus Smith weekly chart. The, and and mm. you, were, you were talking about this, Dan, but look at this uptrend. This You want to talk about relative strength. This has been dramatically uh, outperforming the market for a long time. And then like Dan, like you were talking about in this second segment, it just takes a little bit of a break. Yeah, but it is a, it's still you know, 11 weeks long, more than enough time for people to lose interest in it. And, and just went sideways, not a lot of high volume weeks. Mm -hmm. And then it explodes out. Oh, there's your blue dot, too. Yeah, uh, it, there it is. It, yeah, so it explodes out of it, and now it's just resuming, or hopefully continues to resume uh, the uptrend. Well, also a couple other things on that. So they're not making money yet. Right. Um, they're they're after tax margins. It's interesting. If you're not making money, your margins are probably lousy too. <laughs> but their sales, their revenues are are pretty solid. And I would rather have a company that has really solid revenues than earnings. If I have to, it'd be nice to have both, but because you can kind of massage earnings a bit, but revenue is a little tougher um, to do that. But if you, you know, you're looking at this stock, it's only been trading since late 2018. So mm -hmm. it's kind of an IPO. It's it, probably yep. still on your IPO list. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, September 21st, 2018 came out. Uh, the, the other thing is in all time highs too. Well, yeah, it, and it's, it's, it's just, it, it, it has just cleared yep. uh, what I call the enthusiasm high. I have the, it, maybe there's another term for it. You probably know, but I like that. Yeah. I, I teach IPOs all the time where an IPO comes on the market and then unless it's Palm or something like that, it runs up because people get enthusiastic about it and then it peaks and then it pulls back. And that thing might pull back for a year or yep. more. I mean, it kind of happened with Facebook that way. That's true. But then, yep. but then once the stock, all, and like after it pulls back, then it's just a stock that you're trading, you're either trading it or not. But once the stock does everything that it's doing, and then it starts to come up again, and it breaks through that it breaks to yeah, a, an all-time high. high. Yep. These stocks can absolutely explode. And it looks to me as I'm seeing this weekly chart, I don't like to make prognostications as far as where a price will go. Um, but, you know, the way I look at it is um, I'm just kind of doing a measured move on mine. You know, I can certainly see it going another 10 bucks from where it is right now. And 10 bucks doesn't sound like a lot, but when the stock's 35, yeah. Big Ten move. bucks, so you know, I'll 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 take a trade like that anyway. Yeah. Uh, I I hope you're right since I have shares. <laughs> well, me so. too. So okay, so there we we'll go. Both, uh, so we'll both congratulate each other. You let me know when you're selling it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Now I, I do want to be clear since the, you know Dan and I are definitely both optimistic about this stock. We're in, at the stock in much lower prices. So if you're hearing this, don't go running around. I'm buying it now. You want to be disciplined. Put yeah. on your watch list and let it set up another volatility squeeze. Right. Uh, yeah. Because then it could give you another chance. Yeah, you gotta learn these squeezes. If, if somebody is watching this or <coughs> listening to it, if you can learn how to look at those squeezes and just watch them, this is the kind of thing, <coughs> excuse me, that you will, 
you'll see it and you'll recognize it and you'll go, okay, well, I'll take a small position in this stock. Yep. Um, and then when it takes off, you know, you can buy more, but to look at this three days after the breakout, um, that's when people are, you know, getting their reward by selling the stock. You shouldn't be buying it. You want to be in early. Really good point. So let's go to our second stock here and it is uh, lazy L A Z Y. So lazy day, Lazy Days Holdings. Funny that you brought this one up too. This has started to come up on my radar. It has that really strong uptrend, which was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, what do you like about it, Dan? There's a bunch of things I like about it. And this is, a, right now, it's it's in a little bit of a volatility squeeze. Not really, it just, it kind of needs uh, to, needs to kind of settle out a little bit more. As I would look at this uh, from the 1626 high over, it, it's kind of looks a little bit, like a cup and handle, uh, a little bit deeper uh, mm -hmm. than, I, than I, I would like, but it does kind of fit the criteria. Um, but if you look at the way this stock traded, it, it broke out above 1625 or 1626 and then, and then fell back right away. It's like, oh crap, you know, shake out. Yeah. And then it rocketed even higher. Yeah. Okay, so this is a classic situation where people get sucked in on the breakout and then it pulls right back. There's no follow through. It pulls right back and, and everybody sells because something's wrong with the stock. And there is something wrong with the stock. Your stop got hit or something. You can't just sit there and go, well, I know that moves wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to say, okay, well, I got stopped out. But that doesn't mean you get rid of the stock. You, you just watch it and see, uh, you know, see what's going to happen. And so anyway, so the stock ran up again. And this has been a little bit of a bull killer. You know, it's like yeah. you buy on the breakout and then you get stopped out. Then yep. you buy again and it runs up and you get all happy and then it falls back and you get stopped out again. Yep. You know, so this is like the trail of broken hearts pattern. Um, <laughs> but you see how it's settled out over the last, um, you know, week, week and a half or so um, right along the 50 day moving average. And so, I think it's it's getting ready to go again. We have we have a position in this stock. I, I like I like the fundamentals. Um, I also like the EPS rating um, of uh, seventy six. And um, and maybe I guess is, is maybe this is one. Um, now I think it's been trading for a while. But you and I were talking about this earlier. Yeah. Um, the EPS ratings of typically eighty or better tend to be the best stocks. But a lot of times I find these that have 76 or 78, they kind of don't meet the screen. And then I'll, I'll say, well, I'm going to buy it anyway. And it turns out to be a great trade. So I'm looking at this one and I feel like this could, um, this could run um, again. But here's the thing. They reported earnings and they missed on sales mm -hmm. and on earnings. This is okay. just recently. Okay. And so what's happening with the stock? The Pretty good reaction. Up. Yeah. The stock's up. And yeah. so it's like bad news. Let's buy the stock. And so that's, you know, when the news is telling you one thing and then the stock is telling you something else, listen to the stock every time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that that's really, it's always about the reaction, you know, and we'll, we'll, you know, people always ask me, I'm sure you get this question all the time. It's why is it going down? Who cares? It's yeah. what is happening. Yeah, it, it really, it really is. You can't, I mean, it's, I think the more you, the, the longer you trade, the more you know about the market and, and maybe you can answer some of those questions and mm -hmm. sound like you're really smart or you're really <laughs> wise, but really when it gets right down to it, it, it's moving down because sellers are, it's not like, oh, there's more sellers than buyers. No, they match up share for right. share. It's always right. the same, but it's the aggressiveness. And if people can just think about, the four phases of any stock movement, then they'll be all right. Because you say accumulation. Um, if you look like, look at Baidu, for example, um, this is a great, this is a great example of this. Um, in fact, take it to a weekly chart. This, cause okay. this is really cool. Um, you look at, look at Baidu and it's been in this markdown phase 
uh, from say March or June 2018. Yeah. So it it was in that you know it it uh, it got marked down. It was selling off, which again, not to get you all goofy on the price, but before that, it had been trading sideways been mm -hmm. trading sideways. Yeah, right about there. And then you're looking at that saying, well, this is distribution or is it accumulation? Is the stock going up or down? We don't know. And then it starts going down. Okay, well, don't say, well, that's wrong. You know, no, the stock should be going up. No, it should be going down because it is going down. Mm -hmm. That's a markdown phase. What I'm seeing now, I'm looking at this, you see that like low cup uh, yep. with a little handle there, that is accumulation that looks just about ready to go into the mark up phase. This is where the institutions like are competing with each other, um, you know, body checks against the board, um, cheap <laughs> shots, whatever they can do to get the stock. And then the stock moves up again. So, you know, I was just ran one of my screens to see uh, just looking for certain things. And this is one that that came up. And and I really like the way this is. I really like the way this is looking. And by the way, it just broke out um, today. Just yep. broke out today. Yeah. Um, and I think and it's going higher. It, yeah, it, it's uh, I, I, I agree with you. This this is this is setting up uh, quite nicely. Got back about the the 200 day moving average. The 50 day moving average have started to get back about the 200 day. Uh, you have that volatility squeeze right here, where it has really kind of quieted down on, on the weekly. It has a lot of the characteristics that you were talking about. Yeah, you can. I mean, if even if you look at this is a weird one, I guess. But if you look at Tesla, Arusha, okay. if you want to yep. look at that on a daily chart. Okay. Yeah. Um, this had been, um, you know, from the 502 high, mm -hmm. it had been setting for the most part lower highs and then higher lows. And the stock was just kind of setting up right, right at the 50 day moving average. Right. And that to me looked like it was ready to blast off. Me too. Yep. But it didn't. Yep. It didn't. And so you don't buy that stock in anticipation of a blast off and then hold it, you know, saying like, well, I know I spotted the pattern and I know it's supposed to go higher. So I'll just hang on. Like you don't get rewarded for spotting a pattern. You get rewarded when the stock does what you thought it was going to do. Yeah. But this is a stock where you say, all right, that was a volatility squeeze. that went the wrong way. Reset. Just mm -hmm. Okay, I'll keep it on my watch list, but I'm not going to trade that thing until I get a good setup where I have, um, you know, a, a potential for a nice reward. You know, I see the stock has a ways to go to the upside, but I can also define how much I'm risking. You know, if I'm buying the stock here, where where's a logical place to put my stop? Not just mathematical. Oh, 8%. You know, no, I don't want to. If I'm averaging eight percent on my uh, losses, that's a lot to overcome. Um, but you want to be able to get a stock as close to the support level as you can, um, so that you have, you know, what I call an "oh crap, I'm wrong" level, very, very close to your entry point. So, like Tesla, just needs more time to set up. But this is a little bit of a volatility squeeze that just didn't happen. And so now it has to reset. No, oh, that, that's, a, that's a really good example. Uh, let's go to one more example. And this is a uh, pin dua dua, ticker symbol PDD. And uh, this has been a rocket ship uh, the last couple of days. Yeah, I would call this pin duo duo. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know? And you might be right. I might be wrong. <laughs> no, I'm sure I'm not. I'm sure I'm not, you know. I call salsa salsa. So anyway, um, so yeah, this this is a this is a stock. Um, let me put pull it up on my handy dandy market screen, um, Market Smith. Yeah, so this has you know very very strong fundamentals, and this stock was in. Uh, you know, you could almost look at it as a triple top there, right around ninety eight ninety nine bucks. We'll call it a hundred bucks. So. Um, last week, I was I was telling my members we were looking at that, and I said uh, I I was looking at that ninety eight dollar thing, and I said the problem with buying the stock at ninety six or ninety seven bucks, it's so close 
to where you would say, well, this is natural resistance. The stocks mm -hmm. failed to get above that level three different times. And you can't look at it and say like, oh, well, fourth time's the charm. You know, it's just not a good risk reward, not because you're risking a lot. You could just set a tight stop, but your potential reward, if you're just being logical about it, you know, you say, well, you know, I can't buy a stock just because I got a feeling. Um, and so you have to wait for it to clear that $98 resistance. But then, you know, then it's right up against 100 bucks. So that's a logical place for people to sell. So you have to wait for it to get up above 100 bucks. And so, boom, today was the move. Yep. And it's it opened at 101.82 um, and barely pulled back at all. So in yeah. this case, and you had to be watching the stock, and, and we were, but then you're buying the stock there. And now you've got uh, eight or 9% move in one day. And you can say, well, yeah, but if I'd bought it at 96, I would be better off. And that's true, but you're assuming that the stock would break out. And what if it didn't, then you've got a loss. So I just think a lot of times it's better to um, try to avoid some uncertainty, kind of go for the for the real thing that you actually see. You don't want to be the first, you don't want to be the first one in um, because that's like, you know, the Medal of Honor winners usually get that award posthumously. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be the first one out yeah. of the foxhole. Yeah. Uh, so um, this has been a good, good stock. And I, I think that uh, yeah, a number of those concepts that you just spoke about in the, the last two minutes are just incredible trading concepts right there mm -hmm. you don't have to, to be the, the first one in there and you know a lot of times you, it's you know you can miss out on 20 percent of the the bottom part of the move and 20 percent of the top and if you get 60 percent of the main stage two strong uptrend yeah. you're you're going to do quite well yeah that's why I, I tell people you want to get the meat of the move you yes. just want to get you want to get the middle part of it or like you know dave ryan dave ryan yeah. says um, he goes, I, I don't care about the first double. I want to get the second double, yep. you know, and, and that's, you know, that's, uh, it, it's a really important point, you know. Perfect. So there are a few ideas that are worth considering. And if you want more examples of volatility squeezes or to learn more concepts on technical trading, uh, you know, definitely check out stockmarketmentor.com. So thanks, Dan, for joining us today. Oh, sure. This has been a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Next week, we will have Nina Decca on the show. Nina is a senior research analyst from Robo Global. So that's it for this week on Investing with IBD. I'm Arusha Paris, and thanks for listening. And for this week's Nilton Charts, make sure to go to investors.com slash podcast, where you'll find details for each episode in the podcast episode section. And make sure to subscribe, rate, and review our podcast if you haven't already. We'd really appreciate it. You can also send us your questions and comments to investingpodcast at investors.com. We would love to hear from you and may use your comments on an upcoming episode. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.